Today, I'm gonna show you how to create a dark film look in Photoshop. Hey guys, and welcome to Flurn. My name is Aaron Nace, and you can find me on flurn.com, where we make learning Photoshop and photography fun. And today's episode, it's super cool. We're showing you how to create a dark film look for your photos. This is something that can be done to any of your photos because we're gonna be playing around with the black levels using Photoshop. In this episode, we're gonna show you how to take a regular image and make it look like it's a super dark film style image. We're gonna use a couple levels adjustment layers to really bring up the darks and play with our colors in the shadows, as well as add some interesting color to our image. This episode is really quick and you can use it to add some really interesting style to your photos. All right guys, let's get into Photoshop. So here's our image for today. We've got a lighthouse around sunset, and this episode's based around a lot of people have actually been asking to create these like interesting dark film looks. So we're gonna show you how you can replicate it in Photoshop. So the first thing I wanna do here, we're gonna grab a levels adjustment layer. So let's go to levels, and we're gonna look at RGB levels to begin with. Okay, now there are two sliders within levels, and a lot of people work with this top slider. It will make their image a little bit darker or a little bit lighter but not a whole lot of people play with this bottom slider. So we'll kind of explain the differences between them two. On the very top, you have your input slider, and this is your output slider. So if I take my black point here, and I bring this from the left to the right, basically what happens is everything, all this information to the left of this slider turns completely black. So if I take it and bring it way over here, you can see almost everything in my image goes black. Now, on the right-hand side, we have our whites. So if I take the, right, the whites and bring these to the left, we can see that everything to the right of this goes white. Okay, so that's how the top slider works there. Now the bottom slider actually works as to say like, what is your black point? So right now my black point is black because you can see it lines up with black. But bringing this point from the left to the right, now it basically says, okay, instead of my black point being black, it's gonna be right here at 84, which is our, our output level there that's going to be like a mid gray. And I can make this lighter and lighter and lighter. So what we're doing today is we're gonna use these in combination with each other, which is a really cool way you can use to actually reduce the amount of detail in your photo, giving it a little more of an artistic look. So we're gonna start off with our input levels, bringing this in from the left to the right. There we go. And something right out there looks good. Now we can see this is way too dark. So what we're gonna do, we're also gonna play with our output levels and then kind of bring this, this area in so it's not so dark. Again, we're kind of like losing a lot of the original detail in the photo, kind of knocking a lot of this out to silhouette, but instead of it being so dark, we're actually lightening it up a little bit. Okay, so that's the first step here. We're actually gonna lose a lot of the detail in the darks and then bring those darks a little bit lighter. This is part of the whole process. The next thing we're gonna do is add some color into the darks of this image. So we're gonna go ahead, we're gonna create another levels adjustment layer. You could do this on the same, but I'm just gonna keep them separate so we can see it a little bit easier. All right, now we're gonna start using our different color channels. So let's see what happens with our red color channel. And from here, we're gonna start working just with this bottom slider in the output levels. So if I bring this to the left or the right, you can start to see those shadows are getting all this like really nice red in there, okay? If we go to our green channel, same thing. It's gonna put some greens in there and the blue channel, as you guessed it, it's gonna put some blues. So let's go ahead and put some of these like really nice, nice dark blues in there and some of the green as well. And we'll play around a little bit with red. Now, if you wind up matching the levels of all three of those, it'll just go back to gray. All right, that looks pretty cool. And you know what? I'm gonna even bring this a little bit darker because we do wanna give this like a really nice, interesting look. I, I don't mind that I'm like totally degrading the image quality here because that's kind of the point here. We, we wanna give this really nice, interesting, artistic film style look. All right, that looks very cool. All right, let's go ahead and just close our properties down. Let's look at the before and after real quick. So here's before we did anything, and here's the after. You can see the image has a totally different characteristic to it. All right, so we're just beginning. We're gonna get into a little bit more fun stuff. The next thing we're gonna work on is coloring our sky, which we're gonna do again with a levels adjustment layer. But this time, we're gonna make another levels adjustment layer. There we go. And I'm gonna click on our layer mask, and then we're gonna use our gradient tool. And we're gonna paint with a foreground transparent gradient. All right, 
Now let's switch our uh, color from white to black. And then I'm going to just click from the bottom here and drag right up. Oh, I was on the radial gradient. Make sure you're using the linear gradient and drag from the bottom to the top. Now what this is going to do is make sure this is not actually affecting the bottom of the photo. So whatever I do with this levels adjustment layer, let's go ahead and click right back here. We're going to go to our red channel now, and I'm going to start playing around with our different colors here. So we're going to start playing around with the input levels in our red channel, and you're going to see it's only going to affect the top of our image because we created a layer mask that says only affect the top of your image, basically. All right, our green channel is going to start to bring some green into the sky there, and our blue channel, there we go. We're going to add more blue into the sky. So the layer mask makes the levels adjustment layer only visible in the top of the image. So now we can use that to color the sky. So let's go back to our properties here. All right. And now we're going to go from RGB. We're going to go to our red channel. And I'm going to try putting some reds into the sky of our image, which is really, really nice. And you can, I mean, you can go as far as you want. There we go. I'm going to go pretty far because we're actually, we're trying to create this like kind of unique film style look. All right, and I don't mind degrading the image a little bit. We're going to go to our blue channel, and if I bring some blue into the sky, that's what we look like there. But this time, I'm going to grab our output levels, and we're going to put some of the yellow into our sky as well. All right, and this is starting to look really, really cool. And because we have that gradient mask on there, basically it's only affecting the top of our image. Now let's go ahead and close that off. If I hit shift and click on this image, click on this layer, that's what would happen if it's the entire image. So it's totally okay to use these gradients to actually affect different parts of your photo. Now let's, let, let's say we want this bottom of part of the image to be a little bit darker. Well, we're going to grab a levels adjustment layer again, all right, and we're going to make this way darker, okay? Something right about there. Let's go ahead and close out our properties. Now again, we're going to use the same gradient filter. So I'm going to go from the bottom right up here to the top. Okay, now this actually is the inverse of what I want. So we're going to click on there and hit Command I. There we go. Now we got one more cool choice here because this layer makes everything darker that's underneath it, right? But on this layer, we just told our darks to be this nice dark blue. So what we're going to do is take our levels four layer and bring it down underneath everything. And then we lose all that information under there, which is kind of what we wanted but it's still being affected by this levels layer. So the order of these layers totally makes a difference. So this is bringing everything darker, but if we do that underneath, then we don't lose this really nice color effect. All right, and from here I can just bring this up and down however I want. I can hit Command T, which is my transform tool, to bring that up as well. All right, maybe somewhere right about there looks pretty cool. All right. Now we're going to add a circular vignette to the entire thing. We're going to do again with another levels adjustment layer. We're just going to bring just a little bit of a change in there. Bring our properties back into this window. There we go. And grab our marquee tool. We're going to make a nice big vignette around this image. So with the marquee tool, make a big round selection. We're going to hit command I on that layer mask. And then we're going to give it a nice blur. So we'll go to filter, blur, and over to Gaussian blur. All right, now keep in mind, you can use these techniques on any one of your images, guys, but some images are going to look better than others, right? If this is like a portrait of your mom in the kitchen, maybe you want to don't, <laughs> don't apply so much of a filter on that. All right, this is looking really good. Now, the final thing we're going to do, because I do want this to be a little bit more of that like nice film look, we're going to do a couple things. I'm going to create a new layer, and we're going we're to go to Image and down to Apply Image which basically just creates a copy. You want to make sure layer says merged, RGB, and multiply. This basically creates a copy of everything you see on its own layer. So now that we have this merge layer, which is everything you can see all on one layer, we can do things like add a blur and add film grain to it, really giving it that cool film look. So the first thing we're going to do is add that blur. Now, just a little bit of a blur. It's going to make it look like it was taken with an older camera, maybe not that nice of a lens. So we're going to go to bl filter, Blur and to Gaussian Blur. And again, I'm not looking for anything crazy here. That's obviously way too much there. Uh, we're just going to give it probably less than one pixel. Yeah, 0.7 pixels there. And we'll just zoom in so you guys can see. It's just, it's going to make it look just like, again, it was taken with a cheaper, older camera. So let's turn that preview off and then back on. 
there we go. Just a little bit of a difference, but I find when you're emulating like a film look, that difference actually, it, it does make it look a lot more like it was shot on film. Okay, that looks great. Now the next thing we're gonna do is add some noise. So we'll go to filter, down to noise, and to add noise. All right, and we're gonna bring our amount way down, all the way down, and then we're just gonna use our up arrow until we start seeing just a little bit of noise here. All right, there we go. And this is gonna change on your photo, depending on um, the size of your photo, by the way, okay? So let's see, nine is way too much. Let's try five. All right. Cool. Yeah, that looks pretty good, actually. Let's just see the preview before and the after. And what that does also is it kind of makes it look like all these colors were there to begin with. It just kind of adds some false detail there, and it's like, oh, okay, cool. It was probably like that before. Now, it's not a perfect film grain. Honestly, the noise here in, uh, in Photoshop doesn't represent like perfect film grain, but it does a decent job of replicating it. All right, guys, there we go. And to me, this is actually a gorgeous photo. I really, really like this. So let's go ahead and take a look at our before and our after. Here's our before and the after. And that's all there is to it, guys. I really like the after. It has a really nice artistic feel to it. If you wanna do this yourself, just follow these key steps. The majority of what we did here involved levels adjustment layers. Now, to start off, we worked with both our input and output levels. We brought our input levels way over, making everything completely black. But then we changed our output levels to make the blacks not so dark. Then we created another levels adjustment layer working with the output levels of our different color channels. This allowed us to put some red and some blues into the shadows, giving the image a little bit more of an artistic tone. Next, we created a gradient layer mask and used that to just color the sky. This allowed us to put some reds and some beautiful yellows into the sky. Next, I wanted to make the bottom of the photo really nice and dark. So we brought in a levels adjustment layer and used a layer mask to only have it be visible on the bottom. Then instead of having the levels on the top of the stack, we brought it all the way to the bottom. That way it's affected by everything above it. And to finish this image, we added a little bit of a Gaussian blur and some noise. And there we have it, our beautiful film look. Guys, thanks so much for hanging out and watching today's episode with a little bit of an artistic touch. This was actually brought to you by one of you. We had a question on our YouTube channel that said, hey, can we reproduce this really cool film look? And that's where today's episode comes from. So if you have an idea for an episode or a question or a comment about today's episode, We'd love to hear it. Just leave it in a comment right down below. And if you want to learn more Photoshop and photography, just click on that screen right about now. We'll put a big subscribe button right there so you can get all your free Photoshop and photography episodes delivered to you once a week from flurn.com. Guys, thanks so much for watching Flurn. I love you. <laughs> I do though. Yeah, I love you. I'll see you guys later. Bye everyone. Even though I've never met you, I really love you. I like your face, and I like your attitude, and I like your browsing history too. <laughs> I love you. <laughs> ba -da -ba -ba -ba. I couldn't do the McDonald's one or we'd get sued. I loved it. I'm loving you. <laughs> Bye guys. All right. Hi. Oh, hit my foot. Oh, it hurts. I'll be okay.